Well, today we're going to be looking at a book nook, What I Made, to uh, misquote Ernie Wise. Uh, and a book nook is, you've probably seen loads of them on online and that, and you can buy kits and things from now. And basically it's a, a small little diorama that uh, can sit on a bookshelf between books. They're usually sort of forced perspective, like this one is a bit. Um, you can see it's quite long and you usually have some sort of lighting in there because it gets very dark and it's like a little scene from a book there's some really good Lord of the Ring ones online um, now stupidly when I made this I didn't video it uh, because I didn't think it would turn out it was an experiment um, nothing else um, but it came out really well so I'm going to do some more uh, I want to do like rhymes type scenes um, so I wanted to do a book nook. My wife had just bought a laser cutter, uh, which uh, I can uh, show you some clips of. Um, and basically it's a, a computer-controlled cutting machine that you can cut out, engrave, do stuff like that on. And it's, um, it's quite a handy device. You don't need it. It just makes it a lot easier. Um, so what we did, we bought a load of... Uh, two mil MDF sheets. You can buy them. You can buy them from laser suppliers, and they're quite expensive. Or you can just buy them from B and Q and places like that, and they're much much cheaper. And then I I drew out the pattern that I wanted, and it was just you know ruler and pencil on the back of an old envelope. I wish I had still had my my blueprint. It's downstairs somewhere, but it's so simple. And got it wrong a couple of times. I had to play with it. Um, so this is the absolutely massive although you can get a bigger one this is the uh, smaller version this is a laser cutter and this is the flux um, and basically it's got a laser there and you've got a base and you lay bits of wood into it and then the laser just cuts the wood um, and you can cut lots of different shapes so my wife's doing some Christmas decorations uh, and you cope you get this sort of sticky back plastic papery stuff to go on and that stops it burning the wood or scorching the wood and you can cut any shape you want so like at the moment I'm just cutting out little house shapes so these are all the leftover bits never chuck your wood bits ah here's the actually here's the uh, the book nook bits that cut, were cut out um, where was it them ones so there's the top and the sides and these were just all drawn I mean I, I didn't draw my wife drew them out but I drew the original plans on a bit of paper which I'll see if I can find and the good thing about the laser cut is you can cut plastic and everything you don't need one you can do it with by hand it just makes it a lot more fun and if I if I was doing another one I would change it slightly uh, in the way I'm doing it but but this worked so we did two different sizes we did this size one and also a larger one. You can see a much larger one because I was going to do a bigger diorama. Uh, and this sort of shows you how it goes together. So it just clips together. You can buy kits online for these if you want to buy a book nook kit. But they're like about 30 quid. It's mad. I think that's about three quid's worth of MDF. Probably not even that. So made the basic box. Um, glued it together and then the inside unfortunately I've glued the top on because uh, I've put lights see there's lights going down it so the inside is basically um let me get my scalpel actually you know, I won't use a scalpel I'll probably knack or something I use a paintbrush so the elements are a back wall with windows cut out of it and lights behind it uh two posts to give a 3D effect um some decorations some doors etc um a expanded polystyrene pile of letters that I hand stuck all the letters to, I'll show you that. And then a figure, and this was from um, Disworld.com. They do a whole range of figures. I'll link the video in the description where I paint this. I painted it ages ago. Um, I've got Vimes and a, a one that I want to use in to do a street scene. Um, and it's fairly simple. Uh, and everything else, all the walls, the pillars, the doors, everything else is made out of... Uh, the blue foam 
Um, and I'll I'll cut to a video now where I show you how I cut it on like a, a heated wire. This is the foam cutter. So I invested one of these because I fancied doing some uh, diorama type stuff. Um, and basically, it's just a heated wire. I don't know if you can see it. You see the wire? Very thin wire, and a current passes through it, and the uh, resistance of the wire means that it heats up. And you get various controls, and this is the foam. <coughs> Pardon me. And this is um, like high density foam, so you can cut expanded polystyrene like the you know packing materials with the uh, machine. But this is much much better. Um, so I'll, I'll show you a few sort of techniques that I used on it. But cutting wise, it's dead simple. We turn it on. It goes uh, and then the good thing with this is unlike cutting it from by hand you can do uh, cuts really quickly and to anything you want so you can set the bar to to do a thin so what I used on this especially was uh, for for making um, bricks uh, probably will need to tension that but we'll give it a go the tension seems to just change by itself So all you do, push it against the backstop and then, yeah, the tension's well off on that. Let me uh, just tighten the tension, so all you do is you push it down and then tighten this. I'll do that and come back. Okay, so the wire had jumped the groove, that just means it uh, it wasn't tensioned. It's very hard to hold this frame without turning the screen up. So basically you just go... And then you can also do long lengths, and that gives you uniform foam bits to use. And then what you can do with them to make bricks, and it's uh, can make planks. Dead simple. It's really enjoyable to do. Um, so all the Basically what I did, I'll show you my leftover bricks, but I made a big pot of bricks and some wooden planks and that. And I'll show you how I textured them and go back upstairs for that. So that's how you cut it. And then what you do with it, texture-wise, uh, I'll show you. Let me just put the camera up in the holder. There we go. So... What I did uh, is I cut loads and loads of, so I got far too many sharpies that I just bunged in here to keep safe. So I cut loads and loads of strips, little bits, and everything else was just made up, no plan. I made loads of um, bricks, and what I did with them is put them in a, a like a, a small tin with some gravel from the garden and shook it like mad. And that textures the bricks. And then for this front bit, so for, for this front part, you see that? Uh, all that is, is I stuck bricks on um, using Gorilla Glue, which is great wood glue. It's the best wood glue I've come across. Um, and the other thing you can do to texture, like the pillars, so at the moment it just looks like foam. So what you do is get just some old tin foil, and you scrunch it up. And then all you do is press that against the foam. And it, this foam keeps any dings and dents you put in it. So you see, just, I mean, it's so simple, isn't it? It's, so you can see, so that now looks like a stone finish. And then all I did to turn it into pillars is you just carve like a V into it. And that's where the, the stones go together. Go. and there's a pillar so 
So that gives you the stone effect, and I did that with all the bricks. So I'm making a load of Blake 7 Sugar Smacks badges at the moment. They're everywhere. Um, for the base of the floor, so if you imagine that's the, the wooden base, all I did was, using the hot wire, cut out loads of little flagstone squares, and then just stuck them down with a bit of a gap between them. Like that. And again, used a bit of uh, the tin foil once they're stuck down, just to texture them a bit so they didn't look too clean. Um, and then let it dry. Uh, the doors were literally, I can show you the doors, it's so simple. All you need is a, a pencil. Oh, Doctor Who in character. Um, so, where's my ruler? Where's my ruler? So all I did to do the doors was cut the top part, zoop, cut the bottom part, zoop, and then cut an equivalent one, because obviously you need two doors. It's about to speed at which I work anyway. Uh, so there's your doors, and then all I did was pencil, and again, because this foam takes an imprint nicely, Just draw your planks on it. There you go. And then on the top, just draw the top bits on. There's your planked wood. And then I just used, for the crossbars, I just used coffee stirrers. So wooden coffee stirrers. And all I did was cut across it, not completely through and then just this stuff's such a joy to work with you just carve a recess like that you can be a bit neater and then glue that on cut it flush and there's your door um, the handles were just wire that I wound around a uh, paintbrush stuck into another bit of wood on the doors so doors really good make lots of nice doors window frames were just these in the windows and then use strips again textured to be like stone glued on the flat panels and then once all that's done uh, to undercoat it to paint it I just used Mod Podge which hmm, attacked by a Romulan um, Mod Podge, and this is matte. I'm not a great fan of the gloss stuff. Uh, and this stuff you can get from like Hobbycraft and that, it's dirt cheap. It's brilliant stuff though. It's like a, it's like a weird thin down PVA, but works better than PVA. Um, so all I did, mix a bit of black paint with that, paint everything, a couple of coats, that just brings it all together, and then paint it as normally. So, you know, uh, solid color, then some, shading then some dry brushing uh, and uh, it all comes together the uh, pile of letters uh, so what we did so i i cut out the shape sort of worked out what the shape should be cut it out put a bit on top and then um printed out on the printer loads of little squares some with like envelope bits on and then some were blank and I just like use the Sharpie, it's what those Sharpies do just to, to draw the details on, draw some stamps on. And of course afterwards I thought, at this point in the story, he's not started selling stamps. So I like to think that they're francs rather than stamps. And then literally all I had to do, which was, took about five or six hours over several evenings, is, so if you imagine, I would sort of rough, roughly cut the shape you want and then it was a case of putting glue over it and then sticking letters on all over to get that letter effect um, and then came back the next day stuck, stuck a load more on put some washes over it because I didn't want them bright white um, and then the moist figure like I say I'll link to the painting of him and he's just stuck to the top of it um, 
what else have we got? So the sign was just done on the laser printer, although a few people have pointed out, which is a little bit uh, uh, rivet counting, I think, that the space should be bigger there. And it's like, eh, I don't care. It looks nice. Who else is going to be seeing it? It's just me doing it. Um, and then for the LEDs, you can buy strip LEDs. And I was going to, I bought some strip LEDs to put in there. But then uh, Poundland sells uh, battery box LEDs. And the good thing about them is because of the way they wire them together, you can, they can, they can they're like Christmas lights and they come powered by two AA batteries. And they come in like a strip of 30 for a quid. It's just mad. They're really good LEDs. And you can cut them off, what the ones you don't need, and it still powers the initial ones. So that's all I did. So let's turn them on. So you can see the wire just snakes at the top. Uh, and there's LEDs. That are gonna, there you go. You can see it hot glued in there. Little LED. And then on the back of it, you got the battery pack with the switch. I just cut a hole. Can you see into it? You can always see into it. And then once it was all together, stuck this on, bit of uh, bit of sort of fake grass to make some mould, and then I painted the outside. I was going to cover the outside. I might still do that. Um, and that was pretty much it. It's lots of simple techniques, uh, but the overall effect, I I think, I'm really pleased with. Uh, it's one of my favourite Pratchett books. Um, I love Vimes books and I love Moist Von, I was going to say Moist books, but that sounds weird. Moist Von Lipvig books. Um, probably could do with more letters, but that was just enough for me. Um, and it's not very accurate according to either the film or the book, the description of the post office. But you know what? I don't care. It was just a way of experimenting with this foam, which I so enjoyed. I want to do more. I want to build a big castle. So much fun to work with, and like I say it just takes detail, paints well, dirt cheap as well. You buy it. It's used for, um, I think it's used for loft insulation. Um, but yeah, so that's how it was made. I wish I'd have videoed it all the way through, but you know, I, I just I might have some, I might have took some stills actually. If I got stills, I'll put them in here of the building of it. But I'm not sure that I took any because I didn't think it would come out. It was literally to while away a couple of hours on a Sunday and it grew but uh, I hope you like it I'm gonna have another go at doing one um, like I say it's far from perfect but I like it it's a good little scene I was gonna put some posters up of like veterinary and things like that but I, I like to rush these things and finish them quick and uh, yeah so thanks for watching um, Please like and subscribe if you can. It does help the channel. Uh, my subscribers is growing at a very, very slow rate. It seems to have plateaued. I think I've reached the maximum number of people that are interested in what I'm doing. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching anyway. Um, the viewing figures are pretty good at the moment. But uh, I'll see you again next time. Thanks then. Bye.